Well, greetings from the living room. I'm Jim McGinn. It's a little too hot for the back porch. And I did have something I wanted to share with you. I've been working on this for a while. It's called The Nature of Place. Hope you like it. One of the fondest memories of childhood, or was it just a dream I had, of standing on the front seat between my mom and dad, cruising up 192, what we call New Haven Avenue. Wide open spaces as far as we could see. New Haven, new refuge, new place to be. The car was a 1956 two-tone Buick Special, apricot and bittersweet. A smile broke over my father's face as neighbors waved and we rolled down the street. Apricot and bittersweet. From Pittsburgh to Florida was my family's not so great escape to a sleepy coastal town halfway down, 30 miles south of the Cape. Living in the middle of a grapefruit grove, not exactly the dream they sought, but here they were, like it or not. And from there, my dad got up and drove north to work with astronauts, engineers and astronauts. Now, who would believe, who would think, Alan Shepard would be there to hold a wrench and help him fix a sink? Or was it Gordon Cooper? But up and down A1A he went each and every day, all along the way was a big blue ocean, as far as he could see. I wasn't around for all that, just my sisters and my folks. Mom had taken sick and they were forced to pack up and leave, desperately searching for somewhere, somewhere she could breathe. And this was it. And for a long time, my dad hated it here. He missed his city and his friends. My God, the summer seemed to have no end. The sun blistered his back and burned his face, but it grew on him and this became his place. And there came a time when you couldn't get him out of here. He made new friends and his old ones came to visit and the sunrise on the road to the Cape each day took him out, out and away from all his troubles. Florida boys courted his daughters he got used to drinking sulfur water and that beer from Auburndale, Fishers. And mom started feeling better, which made all the difference, the only difference. They got out of the grove and found a house west of town on the edge of civilization. And soon after the great migration, I came along, swinging a bat and singing a song. And the family has never been the same. I grew up in those wide open spaces, on boats and boards and playing fields, and so many wild and untamed places. So it goes, comedies and tragedies, so the story flows. My life's companion, standing over there with hands on her hips in the doorway, is the granddaughter of a Key West fisherman, descending from Cherokee and immigrants from Norway. But like me, this is all she's ever known. My bloodlines are Irish and Pennsylvanian, but both of us are born and bred Floridian here on the 28th parallel and 80th meridian. Put that in your GPS. Here in this town, we grew up together. Here in a town whose sister is halfway around the world, named by a homesick New Zealander missing Australia. Right here on the Eastern side, I am no castaway king, no prince of tides. Just a man with his bride tied to a place that has given up its nature only through hard usage. Salt water courses through our veins, and for 50 years we braved the wrath of hurricanes. The sun has blistered our backs and burned our faces. Shelby was right. Of all the places, here the air and the heat can sometimes be the very same thing. But not always. Our place? It's a small white frame house on Bignonia Street, our first address. Nothing more, nothing less. A spot to spend our mornings singing Beatles songs. Love, love me do. Dancing with two German Shepherd pups, sipping Maxwell House coffee from our hand-me-down cups. Love, love me do. The destination for a pirated Christmas tree, a fireplace to warm us with fine oak logs. Somewhere safe to bring home a son and a daughter and introduce them to the dogs. 
a space to return to after saying so many goodbyes to mothers, fathers, grandmothers, friends. There's enough joy and sadness to go around in each and every town. We need spots where such memories we can choose to save. A ball field by the library, a tree that shades a grandson's grave. It's a movable place, a boat which carries me alone offshore where I can stand upon the bow facing Africa and leave the here and now, depart the century somehow. A stretch of beach just south of here with a little cooler full of beer, barefoot through the sand spurs, I'd walk the narrow scorching trail with her just to reach the blue green water. Oh yeah, we've done some wandering, road trips to the Outer Banks and Charleston and Savannah and to our islands just 90 miles above Havana. Spent many a day on a Carolina mountain beneath a giant hickory tree then back down through Appalachian and Cedar Key, following our song lines, if you will, crossing the peninsula toward home and Melbourneville. But what place is this again? Where are we now? We've lost our grip somehow here on the Atlantic shore. This sleepy small town ain't sleepy anymore. We too have paid our dues with root holds in the sand, We've had all the growth that we can handle and all the chains that we can stand. But here we are, where we call home, greeting all the grands. So many Junes and Julys have taken their tolls, but watching the ocean, the river, and the skies can salve our souls. And soon enough, we're standing on a spoils island, marveling at the iridescent colors of the water and the clouds, a sight to behold that only heaven is allowed. There with our crazy, joyful Labradors, we could ask for nothing better. We could ask for nothing more. I make a mental note to call my son to float the boat again on Saturday. Jimmy will sing us down the intercoastal waterway, maybe through the inlet, right on out to the stream, running like a heartbreaker, running down a dream. Back home again, sitting in the rocking chair, I contemplate another trip. If we can find somewhere and get the chance, I bet I can talk my girl into one slow dance. Maybe to the Keys, St. Pete, or old St. Augustine. And it dawns on me as I sit and stare at palms and oaks through the back porch screen. We're neither old nor young nor in between. We are what we are and who we are because of where we are. Because we surrendered ourselves to a place and let it take us in. My granddaughter bursts through the door and crawls up on my lap, followed by my grandson. Alas, they have found me in my sacred retreat. How about I tell you two about a 56 Buick, apricot and bittersweet. Fair winds.